Hi there, Luke here with another video. For those of you unfamiliar with our channel, my husband Tyler and I make videos where we document our experiences since moving from North America to the UK. For those of you who have been following our channel for a while, apologies for the delays in our videos. We've had a lot of life stuff happen in the past few months. You may even notice that my background is a bit different because we recently moved from Scotland to Northern Ireland, but maybe I will save that for another video because I want to get right to the chase and talk to you guys about the travel experience that we had in 2021 and wrap up this Eurotrip 2021 series where we traveled around Spain, Portugal, Romania, Moldova, and Ukraine. In this video, I'm going to do our last video in the Romania part of our trip. And then in the next series of videos, we will talk about our time in Moldova and Ukraine. So I hope you stay tuned for that because there's a lot of really cool content that I want to share with you guys. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to give a comment, like, subscribe, and if so inclined, leave a tip with the super thanks button that is super helpful in supporting this channel. All right, let's dive in. From where we last left off, we were in the city of Cluj, Napoca, and from there, we drove our car to the northern part of Romania, and this particular region is called the Maramurish region. The Maramurish is a geographical, historical, and cultural region in northern Romania as well as western Ukraine. It is situated in the northeastern Carpathian Mountains. The northwestern Romanian region of Maramurish is home to many villages where century-old traditions are still part of daily life. The inhabitants of this area have preserved to an amazing extent the rural culture and crafts of their Dacian ancestors. Matamurish villages are distinguished by their unique wooden churches with tall spires and shingled roofs. Woodlands still account for more than four-fifths of the land surface of the Matamurish. It is understandable, therefore, that wood has long been and continues to be the medium of expression for the region's artisans. Elaborate wood carvings decorate the eaves, entryways, and windows of houses all over this beautiful region of Romania. One of the places you can visit in the Matamurish region is called Rogoz Church, or the Church of the Holy Archangels. It's one of eight wooden churches of Matamurish in Romania that is part of this list. These churches are unique in shape and ornamentation, and they have characteristic high roofs and tall, narrow pointed steeples, and they're often collectively described as the Gothic style of the Matamurish. Located in the village of Sapunsa, we visited one of the highlights of our entire time in Romania, the Mary Cemetery. The Mary Cemetery is famous for its brightly colored tombstones with elaborate paintings that describe in an original and poetic manner the people who are buried there, in addition to scenes from their lives. The town folk's ancestors considered death as a beginning, not the end and this faith is reflected in the carvings in the town's unique Mary Cemetery. These beautiful blue wooden crosses feature a carved scene and humorous verses that endeavor to capture essential elements, both the good and the imperfections of the deceased person's life. While obviously we didn't understand what the tombstones said because they were in Romanian, it was still cool to walk around and just take in these beautifully painted graves and just kind of appreciate this unique take on commemorating the dead. Attached to the cemetery is the beautiful Biserica Nastiera Maici Domnului, which had stunning painted frescoes and artwork. Another church nearby that we enjoyed visiting was the Biserica Greco-Catolica Sapunsa, which is the Greek Catholic Church of Sapunsa. Once we were done exploring, we were ready to get to our accommodation and relax a bit, so we proceeded to the tiny town of Breb, 
And in this town, we stayed in an absolutely charming, traditional Romanian accommodation and just enjoyed relaxing and meeting our host, who was this delightful Romanian lady. She spoke very little English, but we were able to get by through sign language, gestures, and just our little known shared language with each other. And she was very generous in giving us a delicious meal as well as lots of alcohol. So she was just so generous and kind and we had a great time just kind of staying in this rural location, the beautiful woodwork and beautiful traditional Romanian designs here. It was a really nice traditional experience to enjoy in the Mahmudish region, so cannot recommend it enough. The people here were so kind. We were just walking around the streets of Breb and we encountered this old man who didn't speak a lick of English, but he was so happy to see people visiting his country and his town. And he even had this photo album that he was showing us the different people who lived in the town and the different areas of his life. So that was just so cool. It was just so nice to meet these friendly people who were wanting to strike up a conversation with us, even though we didn't have a language in common. When it was time to leave the Maramuresh region, we proceeded to the area of Bukovina. We drove east for a few hours through the scenic countryside between Maramuresh Mountains National Park and Rodne Mountains National Park. After about four hours or so of driving, we made it to our one major attraction of the day, which was Sucevitsa Monastery, which is one of the most popular painted monasteries in all of Romania. The painted monasteries of Bukovina, which include Sucevitsa Monastery as well as some other sites, are some of the most impressive UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Romania. They're a collection of eight Romanian Orthodox monasteries scattered across northern Romania. Their painted exterior walls are decorated with elaborate 15th and 16th century frescoes that feature portraits of saints and prophets, scenes from the life of Jesus, images of angels and demons, and heaven and hell. Deemed masterpieces of Byzantine art, these churches are one-of-a-kind architectural sites in Europe. We spent the night in a nearby guest house and just enjoyed the serenity and peace of staying in this countryside location. The following day, we continued our exploration of some of the beautiful monasteries that are in this region of Northern Romania. And first we headed to what is called Humer Monastery, which was founded in the year 1530. And Humer is smaller in comparison to some of the other monasteries and is unique in comparison to some of the others in that it lacks a steeple on its roof, but it does, however, stand on its own among Bukovina's treasures with a variety of frescoes dating from the year 1535. After a while of exploring this particular area, we headed to our final monastery of this trip, and that was to Voronet Monastery. Voronet Monastery is perhaps the most famous and stunning of the painted monasteries, and it was founded in 1487 by Stephen the Great, who was the ruling prince of Moldavia. Widely known throughout Europe as the Sistine Chapel of the East due to its interior and exterior wall paintings, the monastery features an abundance of frescoes that feature an intense shade of blue, commonly known as Voronet blue. So from here, we were reaching the end of our trip and needed to get back to Bucharest to return our rental car, which was a pretty long distance and we wanted to make the most of it and visit maybe some hidden gems of Romania. When we did some research, we decided to head to what is called the Muddy Volcanoes National Park. If you, like me, didn't know what a muddy volcano was, there are actually different types of volcanoes. While we tend to associate volcanoes with the ones that spew lava, there are actually other types. There are sand volcanoes, muddy volcanoes, and ice volcanoes. And this particular case was a muddy volcano, which are pretty rare in Europe. You will not find them many other places in Europe. And on a bigger scale, kind of rare in the scope of the Earth. 
If you do want to go to the hotspot of muddy volcanoes, I came to find out that Azerbaijan has the highest number of muddy volcanoes in the world. So who knew? While we were walking around, we were kind of laughing at how heavy and sticky the mud was, and it kept getting stuck to our shoes and really weighed us down. So it was kind of funny to watch each other struggling to walk through this mud, trudging through. When we were all finished there, we returned our rental car in Bucharest and we parted ways with Tyler's sister Carly as she headed back to Canada and we continued our trip. That is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something new about visiting Romania. And I hope that it has inspired you to visit this really awesome country, which totally exceeded our expectations. We knew that there would be some things that we would enjoy in Romania, but I was really quite mesmerized by the culture, history, and natural beauty of the area. In fact, I would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants a good combination of culture and nature, especially in Europe. So cannot recommend it enough. If you liked this video, please be sure to give a comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for our future videos. In the next one, we will be starting our way east, where we visit the least visited country in Europe, which is the country of Moldova. You don't want to miss it because we are going to break it down for all of the main sites that we enjoyed seeing in Moldova. So don't miss it. See you at the next one. Bye!